How bad do you want it? The dreams God has placed in your heart are not going to come to pass without opposition, without delays, without people trying to talk you out of it. There will be plenty of opportunities to get discouraged, to lose your passion, and think that it's not meant to be. But if you're going to reach your destiny, you have to have a made up mind. If you give up after the first time, or the fifth time, or the 30th time, what that really means is you didn't want it bad enough. There should be something you're believing for that you are relentless. You are not moved by how impossible it looks. You don't give up because people told you no. Your attitude is, if I have to believe my whole life, I am not going to stop believing. I am not going to take no for an answer. I'm not going to settle for mediocrity. I'm going to keep pursuing what God put in my heart. You can't be passive and indifferent. You have to have a holy determination. It's more than just your will. It's a fire on the inside, a knowing that it's supposed to be yours. When everything says it's not going to happen, instead of getting discouraged, you kick in to a new gear. Normal people would give up. Normal people would settle. But you're not normal. You want it on another level. There are a whole lot of people, they want to be inspired in great things, but they don't want to do the hard work to achieve those great things. It's not either or, it's both and. So I really trust today that you will just kind of roll up your sleeves, look at something you haven't tackled for a while, dive in. You'll be amazed that once after you do the work, you get inspired. Don't wait to get inspired before you do the work. I'm telling you, put more time and effort in getting your freedom than being entertained. That's what I'm telling you. Like, come on, like, look, you, you know, the people that you watch put in work. The people that you go see put in work. They were working on Christmas while you were unwrapping gifts. They were putting in time in the gym while you were hanging out. They were putting in time in the office while you had to leave early. They put in work, man. You want to get great and you don't want to put in work? Come up with a good plan. Don't come up with a perfect plan that takes you two weeks to come up with. That's not going to help you. Patton said a good plan violently executed now is better than a perfect plan executed next week. you got to pay attention and watch how it's unfolding. Don't put the blinders on and you've got your plan. Now we're going to go and we're not going to look around anymore. We're just going to follow the plan. No, you have to be observant. You have to observe where you decide to act the whole time. You can't just come up with a plan and stay on that track because when you come up with a fast plan, you're not going to have thought about every single detail. Your future is in your hands. You know what that means? You got to work on your mind. Fortify yourself. You know what that means? You got to upgrade, level up your skill set. You know what that means? That means you, you, you want to be in a community of collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships that's going in your direction. You're supposed to evolve, not be the same way. We've been trained to be who we were not to be. And as a result, most of us are living a misplaced life. And a lot of people have made the decision to give up. A lot of people have made the decision to wait for a stimulus check. They don't require much stimulation. A lot of people have made the decision that I can't make it. Uh, a lot of people have made the decision that this is too painful. This is too much. No, no. A lot of people have thrown in the towel. It's a new day. And it's a new day. It's got to be a new you. You got to be willing to, to transform yourself. You don't put championship rings on smooth hands. You got to put in work. While everybody else is sleeping, you're putting in work. While everybody else, when, when the cheerleaders are not cheering, when the band ain't playing, when the crowd ain't there, you're putting in work. When you put in work when nobody else is around, that's when things come together. 
That's what gives you the advantage. That's how you overcome your obstacles. That's how you overcome everything because you're putting in work. Life ain't luck, man. Life is hard work. Life is faith and life is grace. If you give up every time things don't go your way, you didn't want it bad enough. You have to dig your heels in and say, I am in this for the long haul. I will get well. I will accomplish my dream. I will meet the right person. You're not moved by what's not working out. The other thing is, is that you got to work your butt off. If you think that you're going to go and accomplish something really special and be the best in anything in the world, and you think you can do it without working, you make a big mistake. Because no matter what I did, uh, it always took a lot, a lot of work. And you got to put out, and you got to, you know, something to make a lot of sacrifices and all this. If you're not willing to work hard, forget about it. Every transformation always gets worse before it gets better. It's supposed to be that way. The journey you're embarking on is not an easy path. It's not for the ill-hearted or the weak-natured. It's for the strong people. And before you embark on this journey, mentally, you have to prepare yourself for it. No one is going to get worse before it gets better. When you embark this journey, you must know that it's going to go down before it comes up. But when it comes up, it's going to go so much higher than you've ever been. Sacrificing today for tomorrow's betterment. You have to be equipped mentally to endure this process. Knowing what you're about to go into is step one. Knowing it's an uphill battle, but a winnable one and one that's achievable. So most people are so afraid to fail that they come up with this whole story that it's worse than it is. And of course, when you make it worse than it is, it overwhelms you and now you won't begin. What I want you to understand is that inspiration does a lot better when it's coupled with perspiration. You've never heard someone talk about accidental achievements. You've never heard someone that got to the top of the mountain and somebody ask them, how did you get there? Kind of look confused and say, I have no idea. They know how they got there. So be flexible, but stick to the plan, but be ready to adjust, but stick to the plan. And that's totally contradictory. And I know that, and I apologize, but that is what leadership is. Leadership is balancing those dichotomies. I've told people to learn to use a schedule. And people often hate schedules because they act as their own tyrants, right? They say, well, you have to do this unpleasant thing, and then here's another unpleasant thing you have to do. And, and you do that for about three days, and you think, to hell with this, I'm not doing that, you know? And you fall off the wagon. That isn't what you're supposed to do with a schedule. You're supposed to use it to design the days that you would like to have if you were taking care of yourself. And so you gotta, you gotta treat yourself like a good boss would treat a valued employee and not like a tyrant would treat a slave because the slave will rebel. And you know, people say, well, I, I don't follow through on my plans. It's like, well, A, they're probably not very well formulated and maybe you're doing them because of an external moral obligation or something. They're not really your plans, right? And B, you're acting like a tyrant and a slave and that's a bad relationship to have with yourself. If you've accepted that where you are is where you're going to be, you've already lost. And there's no power in that. There's no power in that. That's like staying right here. You're not popping the clutch. You're not going forward. You've made a choice to just stay here. And that's your responsibility. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying there are not challenges, problems, obstacles, issues, fears. But when you quit right here, you're right. This is where you're going to be. Growth is not an automatic process. If you're going to grow, you're going to have to do so intentionally. And highly successful people, they continually have a thirst for knowledge. They continually ask questions. The secret of your success is determined by your daily agenda. The secret of my success is determined by what I do today. I believe that so much that a few years ago I wrote a book called Today Matters. Basically in that book I talk about the fact that we over-exaggerate yesterday, we overestimate tomorrow, and we underestimate today. If you do not have it written down, 
your chances of it happening is reduced drastically because it's a principle of success. Write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. See, I, my first vision board I wrote when I was 10, I didn't know it was a vision board. The lady asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up. I wrote I want to be on TV. I wrote it at 10. I kept that paper till I was 27. I read it. I flunked out of school. I'm on my third marriage. I lost everything twice. I've been living in a car for three years. But I kept reading my paper. Guess what? I'm TV star. I'm on TV. You, this how this work. Now I wrote it at 10. But surely it will come at an appointed time. I did not get on TV till I was 38. We got to be more determined and stronger and, 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 and be willing to do whatever it takes to live our dreams and create a future for our children. You got to be stronger than the forces working against you. Can't take any breaks. No, absolutely not. This is the new way of being. This is different. And the secret is, is to maintain commitment through all the frustrations, through all the disappointments, through all the setbacks that we will experience and working to bring about change. That's how change comes about. People, you are not a witness. You are a participant. You want to be actively engaged in life. Hart's man was right. We should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind with our voice, with our story, with our energy, with our efforts, with our intelligence, with our abilities, with our dreams. Write everything you want on a piece of paper. Everything. I don't care. Use your wildest imagination. If you can think it, you can achieve it. Write it on a piece of paper. Read it every morning and every night. Come back here one year from today and see how much of that stuff then came true. That's all successful people have. If it's not written, you reduce your chances greatly of it ever occurring. People ask me, James, why do you do, why are you working as hard as you work? Because I remember being broke. You know, being broke is a great uh, motivator to never go back there. That's why I work the way that I work. I don't have to work the way that I work. But I worked that way because I remember what it was like to sit around and wonder where the money was coming from. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to wait for my boss to decide I'm not necessary anymore. Not, not when I got an opportunity to be free. Are you serious? How bad do you want what God has put in your heart? Bad enough to outlast the opposition? Bad enough to overlook some insults? Bad enough to do the right thing when the wrong thing is happening? Do you want it bad enough to keep pursuing even when circumstances say it's not going to happen? Many of the difficulties we face, the delays, the times it's not fair, that's simply a test. This is what weeds people out. If you're overcome by problems, you let circumstances push you down, people talk you out of it, you're not going to have the strength or the courage to sustain where God is taking you. Don't have a weak mentality, have a warrior mentality. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. In essence, all of us at some level to feel alive have to always feel like we're growing. When people ask me, what does it take to be happy? I always tell them one word, progress. Progress equals happiness. Even if you're not where you want to be yet, if you're on the road, if you're improving, if you're making progress, you're going to love it. You're going to feel alive. And so once you've embraced and decided that this suffering, this sacrifice you're making is an indicator of progress, it's an indicator of obsession. Suffering and sacrifice and hard work 
is an indication of progress towards our dreams. The lack of sacrifice, the lack of suffering in our lives, its removal, its non-existence, also equates to a non-existence of a great life, a non-existence of a dream happening, a big one anyway. And so embrace the fact that you're gonna have to sacrifice and suffer to some extent. Once you've embraced that it's going to happen, it's almost not that bad. It's kind of like those of you that are fit. We already know, and you already know even if you're not, you've sort of accepted that before you go to the gym and get there, you're gonna have to suffer. And we go anyway, it becomes a habit. No one goes into a gym thinking, I'm not gonna have to sacrifice or suffer. There'll be no discomfort or no pain. But millions of people go anyway, don't they, to the gym. On some level, they're suffering in the gym, whether it's breathing heavy or sweating or aches or pains or stress. You know, everything in the gym is a sacrifice and to some extent, you're suffering, going through some pain. You know it before you go, don't you? Yet most of us go all the time. Yet in life, outside of that one area, most of us, we're worried about suffering. We're afraid of it. it. When we're suffering and sacrificing, we wonder whether it's worth it. We wonder whether we're supposed to. We wonder whether sacrifice or setbacks or suffering is a sign it's not our real dream. The indication of the pain and sacrifice and sweat. Don't you feel better at the gym? You're like, wow, I really sacrificed today. I really suffered. So in that area, we all know to the extent we suffer and sacrifice is to the extent we grow and your body is a metaphor for the rest of your life, but the rest of our life, every time we sweat, every time we sacrifice, every time we suffer, we don't do what we do at the gym. We start saying, well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this. Maybe I'm not cut out. Maybe it's not my destiny. Maybe I just can't do it. Make a plan. Look at what you're interested in. Get disciplined about something. Allow for the possibility that you have something important to contribute to the world and that the world would be a lesser place without that contribution. Don't be afraid of taking on responsibility. It's where you find what sustains you in your life. You can take on too much responsibility. You, you have to be cautious in that regard, but that's a less common problem than not taking on enough. Now, when it does come to planning, I think the most important part of a plan, the thing that makes a plan the most effective is its flexibility when you do the actual operation and you come up against unexpected things which are absolutely going to happen you have the flexibility you have options you have contingency plans to deal with you gotta have a plan everybody's got a dream everybody's got a goal what's the plan and your plan has got to have something I call the C5 complex. Your plan has got to be clear, concise, compelling, consistent, and committed. You've got to have a plan. And when you're trying to do something that you're truly passionate about, there is no plan B. A lot of the things that people regard as traps are actually the means to their life. You know, often young people are afraid of commitment, for example, in the context of a romantic relationship. And because they feel that that's going to interfere with their pursuit of something more valuable, but that's just not the case. You're not going to find something more valuable in your life than a committed relationship with someone that you love, that sustains itself across time, and that in all likelihood produces children. That's life. So don't be afraid of that, or be afraid of it, but don't let that stop you from, from pursuing it. When you see transition really start to happen, when you really want to transition to something, master there's no limits you know don't let the world ever put limits on you you can do anything you want to do but make sure if you have a vision make sure the vision is written you know make sure you have something to actually chase and not just hoping and wishing and all these different things so put your plan together and then work the plan don't 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 work somebody else's plan right it's one thing about the league i love the league but the league is somebody else's brand right you have to create your own brand yourself never give up without commitment you'll never start but more importantly without consistency you'll never finish keep working keep striving never give up fall down seven times get up eight when you feel like giving up don't when you thinking about giving up don't when they tell you you can't 
Come on, man, who are they? When they tell you you're not gonna make it, don't believe them, man. You got to be relentless. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. If it's going to be hard, easy is not an option. But if it's hard, we will do it hard. Whatever is required, it's worth whatever we have to do. And once we know that, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. See, we're talking tonight about pruning. Talking about what needs to stop that we might start the right thing. What do we need to break up with so we don't break down in the future? Because so many of us tonight, as I'm preaching, you're starting to go to the habits you need to stop. You're going to the thought process you need to stop. Some of us in this room, there might be a deeper fundamental truth. And the deeper fundamental truth and the simplicity of it is, is that some of you in this room, you just have to stop stopping. Until you have had the taste of finishing, you will not respect yourself. Tears and struggles and pain, and you go through it anyway, and you continue to fight on, no matter the circumstances, after a while, something begins to wither inside of you. You may not understand why it's taken so long, why it hasn't turned out the way you thought, why you're in a lonely season, but everything you've been through was to strengthen you, to develop you, to prepare you. God wouldn't have allowed it if it wasn't part of the process. Without it, you couldn't give birth to what's in you. Keep passing the test. Keep doing the right thing, then your time is coming. Your baby is on the way. What God promised, he will bring to pass. As our days are, so shall thy strength be. As thy days are, so shall thy strength be. That means the tougher the day, the greater the strength. The harder the test, the greater the power. In other words, I measured the day before I released the strength, and I am sure that I gave you enough strength to get through whatever this is. Because you passed enough tests that he knew you could handle it now. Because he's going to show up in your life in a way that he's never showed up before. And yes, you may have more trouble, but you're going to have more glory, more anointing, more blessing, more wisdom. More of this means more of that. So when you see all hell breaking loose, understand that the angels are coming from every direction. You have to trust God. When he says no, the saddest thing I have ever seen is a wasted opportunity. I've seen people misunderstand the opportunity, pollute it with arrogance or self-aggrandizement and lose the opportunity. That most people get caught up in the distractions of life. Look around and praise God. Because whatever you've done is on the tip of the iceberg possible for you. Yes. Look back. Thank God. Look around and praise God for all the possibilities, all the things that is looking at you, waiting for you to take advantage of. Expand your vision for what's possible for you. To decide that you, your, your circumstances are not going to define you. Make a decision. This is a pivot point. This is a deciding moment that you've had it living life as you've been living and you want more. Because you deserve it. You deserve it. Keep some things for you. You don't have to share it until you have a relationship problems to the world. Work on it instead of sharing it. Update your problems to God, not people. Find the validation in them. You already been validated. What they say, what they like, what they comment shouldn't make you feel special or unspecial about yourself. So stop letting people make you feel different. Stop sharing all of the visions and ideas that God sends you. Do it. Stop trying to talk people into what God told you to do. Just do it. 
you're pretty much not doing anything that hasn't been done before. But sometimes, in most cases, God will send these individual bold visions. You end up letting people talk you out of something that's inside of you that you're supposed to do. Every thought that we entertain produces a chemical in our brain that impacts the body's immune system. So just for good health and peace of mind, let it go. Any feeling of resentment or anger or hatred is called to me the load of bitterness within. So, so if you were a Christian Louboutin and if you were a Gucci and if you were a Nike, then you must be somebody now. You cannot have a possession-based understanding of who you are. Give me that job that'll make me important. If you weren't important before you got it, you won't be important after you get it. One way God vindicates you is He promotes you in the presence of your enemies. He doesn't do it in private, but in public, so that those that left you out, they will see you promoted honored in a position of greater influence all of you hanging out with all these random people and you gifted and talented they cannot contribute to your ultimate level of success that you're on your way to they can't inspire you to go to that next level because they're not even on your same level of thinking greatness is not popularity it's not how many Twitter followers you have. If you get busy worrying about, does everybody know how good I am and how great I am, you'll sacrifice your greatness for popularity. Greatness just does what it does, and people discover the greatness. They see it in you. We must set up our inner boundaries, or our thoughts will be confused. And with confused thoughts, we'll end up being confused hopelessly lost in the maze of life. Look around you at this very moment in time. What might you be doing that needs attention? Wouldn't this be an ideal time to examine your need for a new discipline? Take life seriously. Life has no duplicate. Decide as you look at your life, as you determine what is it that the next greatest version of myself. You have to monitor and manage the priorities in your life. Guess what number one is? Your state of mind. And I know it's hard to hear, but keep on believing in that voice. Deep in your soul that's whispering, I'm going to make it. You do this, and I have no doubt that you too can become something else. And if you have to defy gravity to catch a dream, then you'll grow wings. There's something magical about you. It's time to discover that. Hidden greatness is usually revealed during hardships. It's the hardship, the crisis, that brings greatness out of people. The hard places reveal hidden greatness. Hidden greatness will get in trouble and rise to the occasion. Listen to me, you have been given an opportunity. You have been given an opportunity of a lifetime. And if you think you're gonna blow up, if you think you're gonna get to the next level by luck, you got another thing coming. Opportunity comes in chaos. A chance to stand up, a chance to get it right, a chance to make a new turn. I can change, you can change, the other people in our life can change, our finances can change. There's nothing that cannot change. Don't look at any situation and think this is hopeless, this will never change. And yet we have such a tendency to lean toward what's wrong and finding the fault. But we can change that attitude. The process, the little steps that make a mile, it is not the destination. It is the things you learn along the way. It is the people who beguiled you and tricked you that make you wiser. Wisdom is made out of the stupid things you did before you got it. By not being prepared, you make the choice of getting caught in some of life's unpleasant circumstances. Failures, personal losses. By not being prepared, it's your choice. Now here's the other side of it. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success. When things go wrong, they always seem to happen at once, and they just compound. 
on top of each other and it's it's pretty easy sometimes to to feel beaten when you're faced with all those issues and all those problems and they all hit you at the same time let me tell you that doesn't mean give up it means it's time for you to fight harder to dig in it means it's time for you to go on the war path what do you want what do you see for yourself look ahead what do you see for you look beyond your circumstances expand your vision become clear about what is it you want what is it that you want for your family what is it you want for your health look around at your environment does it feed you does it fuel you does it motivate you does it inspire you or does it drain you does it deplete you is it compromising your power your circumstances very important if you take yourself and you put yourself in a new environment, new genes turn on in your nervous system. They encode for new proteins. You're full of biological potential that won't be realized unless you move yourself around in the world into different challenging circumstances, and that'll turn on different circuits. It's that by exposing yourself to different environments, you put different physiological demands on yourself all the way down to the genetic level, and that manifests new elements of you. Because you take yourself out of your dopey little village, and that's just the little bounded you that everyone knows and that isn't very expanded, and then you go somewhere dark and dangerous, and while you do that, you have adventures and they toughen you and pull more out of you, partly because you're becoming informed Time and change are the raw materials of life. These are two things you can't stop, and they keep moving. And they build your life. Time and change are building blocks. In other words, time and change are the only commu commodities in life that every human have in common. All of us are given 24 hours every day. A lot of people are just showing up in life. A lot of people just get up in the morning, go to the job just to pull a check down, watching the clock coming in. So you want to be a different kind of person as you forward your life. If you're going to do it, it's worth your time, your energy. You've got some expectations from this. I do not let people waste my time. If there's considerable time that passes between the moment of awareness and the time of our implementation, then that is called procrastination doing it tomorrow instead of today, an almost exact opposite of discipline. The voice within us says, get it done. Discipline then says, do it now, tomorrow, and always, until finally, the worthy deed becomes instinctive. Doubt comes from the suffer, it comes from a loss, it comes from fear, it comes from the sacrifice. And so just remember this, you're supposed to suffer and sacrifice. What are you willing to risk in order to make your dream come true? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. You're gonna take a risk, maybe it's financial. Maybe it's a risk of looking bad. Maybe it's a risk of failing, of falling on your face, of going broke, of going through anxiety. What are you willing to risk in order to win? You're not doing it for their sake, you're doing it for your sake. That poison is contaminating your life. When you release it, you'll step into new levels of freedom. Is there something you need to let go of? Bitterness, anger, how someone treated you? It wasn't right what they did, but you're forgiving so you can be free. Dreams motivate us. Dreams energize us. In all of your getting, get a dream in your life. A dream is the inward picture of the future you desire. And don't act like it's not important. And when God is going to do something in your life, he'll give you a picture first on the inside of where you're going before you ever get there. And he says, live into that dream. Use your power to change things, not to complain about your situation. Use your power to recreate things, not talking about where you are. Use your power because you've been given authority and dominion over everything. Exercise it, don't give it away. Look ahead. What is it that God is calling you to do? What's in your heart? 
Because where your heart is, there your treasure is also. What's in your heart? That's a calling. You were created on purpose, with a purpose. You're still here regardless of what you've gone through. You're still here regardless of what you've done and all the things that you've done that you shouldn't have done. You are still here for a purpose, for God's purpose. You can change whether or not you go for the skills, multiply your value by two, three, five, ten. That you've got charge of. That you have control of. You don't have control of the constellations. Learn some new skills. You have control over that. What's the biggest problem? What's causing the most stress? Explain where you are at. Be blunt. Be upfront. And then give them the simple plan of how you're going to get things back on track. You give it to them straight. Right? You're falling behind at work. Talk to your boss. Face it. Tell him you're going to get after it. And tell him that you're 100% committed. It won't be easy. It will be hard. Because life is hard. That's what life is. I know people do things that hurt you. Everything is not fair and everything is not just and everything's not right. Sometimes you've done the very best and you don't get selected and you don't get the opportunity. You cannot afford to get bitter because if you get bitter, you will never get better. You got to get that out of you. If you got to throw it up, if you got to pray it up, you got to get it out of you. There's a curse on it. There's a curse. You got to get it out. 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 He left you. He cheated on you. Get it out. Get it out of you. Get it out of you. So you go ahead. That's the character test. It's like, what do you do with messages of error? Here's what not to do. I am a bad person. I might as well just go jump off the bridge. It's like, no, that's not good. Because what that means is that every time, every time you try to learn something, you're going to make a mistake. Because what do you know? So you're going to make mistakes. And if the rule is every time you make a mistake, you're going to go jump off the bridge, then that's not a useful problem-solving strategy. And so when you make a mistake, you don't get to beat yourself to death with a club. It's a bad strategy. These challenges that you face, they're going to do their best to take you down. Let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let their demands and their trials make you stronger. Stand up. Dig in. Line up those problems and confront them. Face them. Fight them. A man should live fully, be alive. He should be glad to get out of bed in the morning. He should be doing a job he likes to do because he does it well. My years in the newspaper business have convinced me of several things. Among them, that people are basically good, and that we came from someplace, and we're going someplace. So we should make our time here an exciting adventure. The architect of the universe didn't build a stairway leading nowhere. But for this whole process to work for us, we must first master the art of discipline, self-discipline. Consistent self-discipline. It takes consistent self-discipline to master the art of setting goals. If we don't make consistent self-discipline part of our daily lives, the results we seek will be sporadic. Become aware of what your needs are. Develop compassion for yourself despite your human defects. You will never be perfect. You will never be perfect. You're human. You've made a lot of mistakes. It takes a consistent effort to truly manage our valuable time, or we'll be consistently frustrated. Our time will be eaten up by others whose demands are stronger than our own. You can't be in price tag mode. What's it cost? What's it cost? What's it cost? You never get what you want. Decide in advance what it's going to cost. Successful people don't negotiate the cost of something. They negotiate whether it's worth it. If you're a person who's always thinking about what it's costing you in the sacrifice towards your dream, you're always going to be negotiating it. I used to be broke. And I might be broke again. But nothing lasts forever. To everything there is only a season. Whatever your season is right now, it cannot last. There are two things that may be said of everyone. Each of us wants something, 
and each of us is afraid of something. Perhaps you'd like to double your income or make a specific amount of money. It may be a beautiful home. It could be a more harmonious family. Each of us wants something. Think about it in a cheerful, relaxed, positive way each morning when you get up and immediately you have something to work for, something to get out of bed for, something to live for. No second chance. No what would I do differently. Choose one or the other. But both will have their price, the price of discipline or the price of regret. You see, the discipline that it takes to make your bed every day is the same discipline necessary for success in the world of business. The first lesson of discipline is that it isn't the easiest option. The second lesson of discipline is that it's a full-time activity. If you keep hanging out with negative people, it's going to infect you with fear. Stop filling your mind with negative words from television, internet, social media. 